Hi, hello there. Do you get guilt dreams? I was thinking about you. I was thinking about this. And today's episode is not about guilt, but sometimes it's about work or family or you just spend a dream feeling bad and guilty. Does that happen to you? (laughs) Hi there. I'm Jeffrey Marsh. This is the Jeffrey Marsh Podcast. I am an author, an activist, best-selling author, best-selling activist. (laughs) I am here to help, and I hope that I can be a help to you today and every day. Welcome. Why make a podcast? Why are you doing this, Jeffrey? Why are you doing this? I had a tough time finding a podcast for myself to listen to that was fun, that was inclusive, that was kind, that was an audio and video safe space, you know, where you could put the earbuds in and feel safe. And... I had a hard time finding a podcast to listen to that gave me down-to-earth, everyday, real, practical advice about living a happier life. About, not just happy, about living a life where I hated myself less after listening. I had a hard time finding all of that in a podcast, so I decided to create this one. It's my aim to do all of those things. We'll see step by step together how that goes, and I would love your feedback. But I wanted to do the Jeffrey Marsh podcast to help people hate themselves less and to forward LGBTQ acceptance. If you can find the video version of this podcast, I am gorgeous. It's worth taking a look. Today's subject is hate. I'm semi-famous for being hated, for putting love out into the universe and having people on the internet, oh gosh, uh, make videos about me that accuse me of things, that hate on me, that send their followers to, you know, attack me and stuff like that. How do I deal with it? I wanted to do the inaugural, inaugural episode about that subject because I know you care about hate. I know that you, and and when I say you, always, always, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you, listener, not, not some theoretical idea with a capital Y, you. I'm talking about you. I know that you listening experience hate in your life from coworkers, bosses, people at church, wherever. You have a personal level of people judging you, accusing you, and hating you. How do we deal with that? But I know that you also care about global hate. How are we going to take this tide, this moment, this wave, this this place that humanity has found itself in where hate is on the rise, How are we going to, we who care, how are we going to combat that, change that, reverse that? So I wanted to take some time to talk about that together. So we're going to do the personal stuff and we're going to do the deeply important global stuff when it comes to hate. Hate is the universal subject. I think humanity can be either moving toward hate or toward love. I think individual humans can be moving toward hate. Is this too deep? (laughs) Is this too deep for the first 10 minutes? We can either be, as individuals, moving toward hate or moving toward love. We can be moving toward self-hate. We can be moving toward self-love. We can be moving toward other hate. We can be moving toward other love. 
And to me, the processes are very similar because humanity can be moving. <laughs> I care about you so much because humanity can be moving toward humanity hate or humanity love. Just like self-hate and self-love are processes, humanity can be moving toward a humanity self-hate or a humanity self-love. And I'm going to share with you actual practical things in today's episode that you can do to move toward the love side. Ways that you can see what you're working with and work with love, choose love instead of hate. And so to reiterate, yes, you are in a safe space here. You are in a place where you belong and where you can and should, and I hope you do, have a sense of togetherness and community because we are the people who care. We are brought together because we deeply love and deeply care and we are deeply sensitive people who want the world to change and change toward love. That's what we do. Why is this important to you as a listener? I covered it a bit, but I want to just emphasize and underline that the focus of your life has a lot to do with the quality of your life. Where you put your time and attention and focus has a lot to do with how good you feel, how good your life is, how fun your life is, how much you feel connected. Where you put your focus may be the most important choice you make. And let me tell you, it is a choice or often. It can be a choice. So how do we make that choice for love? How do we support each other? And how do we support ourselves to have a loving life? To choose love for humanity? To choose love for each other? We're going to talk about it today. But first, a personal story. So I'm going to open the episode today by talking about Newsmax. I am LGBTQ, I'm trans, I'm non-binary, and I have a little bit of, of notoriety because I was the first non-binary person on national TV to just come out and say I'm non-binary and talk about being non-binary. Asia Kate Dillon was on the show Billions. Asia is just a just a wonderful person inside and out. Um, just a great, great person. And they were on Ellen's show, talking about their character and being on the show, TV show Billions. And that was a few months after I had been on Newsmax. So I just squeaked in there and happened to be the first person to talk about it on national TV. And I bring that up because I think there's some kind of metaphor there. I think trial by fire as an LGBTQ, as a trans, trial by fire is something a lot of us are used to. And, and I should reiterate, if you're cis, if you're non-trans, you are welcome here. I'm glad you're here. This is not a show. Often people are like, I know your, your videos are just for trans people. No, no, no. Everyone who cares and is sensitive and is a good person is welcome here. Uh, even if, uh, let me even broaden that out. If you're just trying to choose love <laughs> and sometimes you don't make it, right? You're welcome here. So I got this email in my inbox. This was 2016. My book, How to Be You, had just come out. My bestseller, How to Be You, had just come out. And we we got this email. So my manager and my team and I got this email from a producer at Newsmax saying, would you come on? My name is so-and-so. We're doing this segment about non-binary identity. Would you come on and talk about your book? And I found out later that that person was slightly 
really subversive, that producer, and wanted to do a little magic on Newsmax by having a magical creature, me, on Newsmax, wanted to sort of undermine, um, don't, 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 this is just gossip and rumor, don't get that person in trouble, but chose me specifically and reached out to me only for this segment. And I talked it over with my team, and we decided amongst ourselves that if I was going to preach the message of love, if I was going to preach a message of inclusion, if I was going to preach the good news that trans people are good and wonderful people, that sometimes I would have to do that under pressure. So... We said yes, we wrote back. And if you look up that clip, which has mm, gone viral several times since it aired on TV, you will see that I choose love. That's why I wanted to share that story with you today. I am there not to fight with the host. It's like nailing jello to the wall, right? The host wants resistance and I don't give it. The host wants a fight, and I do not fight back. The host wants hostility to make, I think, quote-unquote, good drama TV, and I don't give it. I give back kindness, love, beauty, acceptance, if I may brag, charm, humor. Those are the things I was focused on. And I wanted specifically to talk about that time in my life because I did that consciously. Before the segment started, I was saying to myself, I love you, Jeffrey. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for doing this. This is so important. I love you. And no matter what happens, I'll be with you. I was literally coaching myself within the context of you know, the lights coming on, the camera starting to work, the makeup being touched up, you know, being on a TV set, I was saying loving things to myself. And I hope that it translated into magic in that interview. And again, you can find it online and you can judge for yourself. But it's deeply important to choose kindness and love for ourselves, even when we are facing deep hatred, enthusiastic hatred, all forces working against us and coming at us. And when we face deep-seated misunderstanding and judgment and accusations, honestly, I was with myself and I chose to be with myself. And I'd like to teach you to do that same thing with yourself today right now. We're going to take a break. Um, this is episode one. There are no ads <laughs> in this episode. Uh, freely given from the heart. Um, but we're just going to take a breath and I'm going to pause for two, three seconds so that we can have a bit of an energy shift. And when we come back from that energy shift, that aura fluffing, if you will, when we come back from that, and again, like 10 seconds from now, we will, uh, five seconds from now, we will talk about my personal top five tips for what the heck we're going to do, what the heck we're going to do with hatred internally, externally, in ourselves, in the world. How do bees get to school, they take the school buzz. How do we, <laughs> I hope you're laughing, how do we choose love? We practice it. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to practice that in just a few moments. Welcome back. <laughs> Did you like that silence? <laughs> if you if you happen to go 
to the YouTubes and look up the video version. I was just sitting here. Um, I actually said something nice internally to myself in those moments. Top five tips for encountering and transcending, transmogrifying hate, changing hate, moving with it until it becomes love. Number one, you have to have a self-love foundation. So in the story I told you, you need to speak kindly to yourself. And I don't mean for it to sound like, oh, flip a light switch, and now you're self-loving. You were self-hating, and one day you chose self-love. It does take a lot of practice, and it does take a lot of conscious choosing, and it does take a lot of trying different things until you find what works for you. But you must have your own back as a foundation if you're going to encounter hate from the outside or inside, honestly. But let's say it's from the outside and it's a coworker accusing you of something. You are going to need to have a lot of self-kindness and self-love to be able to discern in that situation what may be valuable in what they're saying and what may be unvaluable in what they're saying. You know, if they're an arch, like if they're a bigot and they're an arch hater of you, there, there's probably nothing valuable in what they're saying. But if they're in a bad mood, but they are bringing up something that there may be a truth in, you, you're going to have to navigate all of this and you're going to need self-love, self-forgiveness, self-kindness, which is why I always harp, 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 harp on changing your self-talk, learning to treat yourself with love, learning to be kind to yourself. These are the absolute fundamentals. And when it comes to hate, nothing more fundamental than learning to love yourself as an internal process, as a foundation. And we can actually talk about what the hot tips are for that uh, as we move along together throughout this podcast series, because I think having day-to-day -day practical tips for that is a good thing too. You might write letters to yourself in a journal. That's one of my favorites. Uh, dear Jeffrey, I love you so much. Thank you for what you did today. I know it wasn't easy, but I wanted to just pop into the journal and say that I adore you. Signed, Jeffrey. You might implement some of those things, and that would be a fun, fun, practical way to do it. Number two, dive into the... <laughs> I'm using, <laughs> you really should get the the, um, the video feed because I'm using my iPad and I have evidently reactions turned on and the screen did something fun when I held up the number two because I'm a gesticulator myself. Number two, dive into understanding. Where is hate coming from? Nobody who comes at you who's on the outside comes at you with hate no one who comes at you with hate is a happy person. They are trying to get a need met. And that automatically means that they believe that their needs are not being met, that they are separate from life, that they are separate from you, that they are in a place of minus already. Intellectual understanding only goes so far is my caveat and warning, right? You're going to have to have heart understanding, which I can talk about the difference in a minute. But have that intellectual understanding because that is also going to be an important context for you to not take the hate so personally. That person is feeling less than, minus, like they're missing something, and they think that hating you is going to fulfill that thing. They think that hating you is going to get them what they want. Having an intellectual understanding of that will hopefully help you also not take it personally, not take hate personally, but also feel connected to that human being because you know what that feels like for yourself. Number three, connect with your community and with positive spaces and with loving spaces. So this podcast is one. 
You may find other places, activist places or uh, groups where you feel loved and unjudged and included and where you can be authentic and let your hair down. You got If you're going to do any, <laughs> you know, I said, everybody gets hate. And that is true. And honestly, 99.99999% of all the people I've ever met in my life have self-hate too. And one of the ways to counterbalance is to find the loving places, find the outside people and places that can reflect self-love to you and that can be on this same journey and show you what it's like to transcend self-hate and always have that in mind. So connect with fun stuff, beautiful places, fun Dancing, enjoying, cute, beautiful spots, people, places, groups. And um, yeah, I know sometimes human beings are selfish, self-absorbed, hard to deal with. <laughs> Let's just talk about it, frankly. But you can find people who are on the same path. And I would recommend you do that as a counterbalance especially if you're going to face hate in any of the work or activism that you do. Number four may be the most fun. It's definitely the most important to me. Educate with grace and do it for you. So educate people with grace when they come at you with hate right? Show them how it's done with love. Show them how to choose love. You may even find ways, subtle or unsubtle, to tell them that hating you is not going to get them into feeling better. Hating you is not going to get them into a place of self-love. Hating you is not going to get their needs met as a human being. You may educate, do it with grace and from a kind place, and do it for yourself. Do it because that feels good to you. Do it because that's what you want to put out into the world. Do it because that's what you choose, because that's who you are. If you try to educate with grace for them, it's dicey because often you will push some of their buttons and they'll come at you with even more hate. They'll hate you more. They'll become more obsessed. And you don't want to set up an internal self-hating standards process where you are trying to educate with grace in such a good way that they have a transformation. <laughs> it may take years for them to have a transformation. Let's face it. It may take several encounters. Um, before they transform. I will tell you again to brag that I've gotten several emails and still do regularly from people who have transformed because of the work I do. And for example, they like trans people um, all of a sudden. And that is deeply fulfilling, but sometimes it takes a long time. So educate with grace, but do it for yourself. Mmm. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you're not separate from those people that hate you. You are not, quote unquote, above anybody. Uh, nobody is, right? We don't want to have that kind of hierarchy in our mind when we attempt to offer the good, good grace of educating folks about why hate doesn't work. Number five. Breathe and reflect. This one I wanted to put on the end because you deserve kind, deep breaths. You deserve a sense of peace. And you deserve, this is what educating from grace really means to me on a deeper level. You deserve to react to any hate coming at you internally or externally with your truth. You deserve to be fully grounded and deeply present in your truth 
as you're reacting. Often what a hateful person, so if we take outside as an example, someone outside you is coming at you with hate and accusations and, and um, vitriol, you don't want to react within their truth. That is not the, the moment we're having. That is not the thing we're doing. That is not the spiritual path we are on. You want to react within your truth to the situation. And the way to do that is breathe and reflect. It's going to be one of the hardest things you'll ever do. They'll come at you with hate, and instead of immediately reacting, you'll breathe and reflect so that your truth has a chance to rise within you. And so that you can react from your truth. The tool to get there, as I found from my experience, <laughs> I'm a Buddhist. I've been Zen Buddhist for over 25 years. From my experience, it's that chance to breathe and reflect that will create enough space to short circuit the natural inclination to react from their truth and not yours. So again, we'll take a breath and a break to let some of those episode one, no ads, to let those truths settle into your bones a little bit. And I would encourage you in the silence to tell yourself something kind in the three seconds to tell yourself something nice. Just practice it. And when we come back, we'll have our closing our encouraging words, our thank yous, our gratitude, and a chance to say goodbye. I'll see you in just a moment. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, obviously, I couldn't do it without you. That probably logically goes without saying, but life is an experiment. This is a new project, a new way of being, a new um, thing to put out in the world for me. And to have your kind, loving um, support is wonderful. So my words of encouragement to you are, Nick's standards, just get rid of them. It's, you know, there's something, you know, it's... <laughs> Spiritual practice is wonderful when things are going wonderful. And spiritual practice gets a little dicey when everything is going to caca, when everything's falling apart, when um, something happens that's deeply sad or angering or difficult for us or feels personal. And so what I would encourage you to do is give yourself a moment of love, kindness, and encouragement. Simply give yourself a lack of how this should be going. Simply give yourself a lack of, oh, I'm here, but I should be here. <laughs> oh, I'm here, but I should have done this. Um, the sooner you can get over playing that um, game, the better, the better off you'll be. And I want you to have a life full of kindness, love, and to be pointed toward love, like we were talking about earlier. And that's going to come with times when you just don't do it, or don't do it a way that you wish you had done it. And learning to navigate all of that with a sense of love and peace and kindness is your birthright. It's what you're here to do. Gratitude is a part of this practice. And you absolutely can show me gratitude. You can put in the comments you loved it. You can email me. You can feedback, feedback, and tell me all the things you loved. And you can also feedback, feedback, and say, I want to see this. I, I, I would love to have this in my life too. But also give that feedback to yourself. Give that love to yourself. Give that gratitude to yourself. Instead of making a gratitude list, just make specifically a list of things about yourself that you're grateful for. Things you did, ways you are, choices you made 
to be in this world and have that me gratitude list (laughs) as one of your tools to come back to, especially when things feel dark or disconnected or difficult. I've written two books. Um, I've said that our bestsellers, <laughs> I didn't, I couldn't think of the word bestsellers called Take Your Own Advice. That's the recent one and How to Be You. And they are love letters to you. They are gifts to you. So I hope you'll pick up a copy, give some to your friends, pass them along, write a review on Goodreads and um, engage with those because they're waiting for you and they're waiting to support your heart. Please, wherever you're listening to this, subscribe and stay closely connected to this community. I would love to see you again and again and again. And I get to know the the various friends and folks who hang around and who are super dupers. And so I, I want you here. I want you to stick around. I want you to come back. If you'd like to coach with me one-on-one, it is something you apply for, and I'm quite popular, but you can check out on jeffreymarsh.com what that program is like and how you might want to engage. And also while you're there, while you are there, download the meditations and workshops that I have that go deeper into some of these ideas. Take very good care of yourself. Be kind to yourself, and I will see you in a little bit. Bye-bye.